I'm not going to put spirit levels on it just in case it's moved because then I'll probably cry in the bathtub. Hey folks, welcome back. We're on the bathroom project. I'm going to be finishing off a few jobs today, including the bath screen and making a start on the radiator. Let me show you what I got done last night and then we'll make a start. So the first thing I went ahead and did is all the silicon. Uh, this is quite a large bead I've got here, but that was needed because the shape of the bath and also there was a bit of a dip in our wall here, but it's looking like a nice clean job. It's so easy to put a silicon tool along this and get a nice sharp angle. So that's all done along there. I think it was an eight mil radius in the end or an eight mil angle. Uh, all the way to there. I haven't done the gray down here. Now I would always do the vertical first. I didn't have my grey silicon, so that's a bit of a pain. So I just have a little bit of detailing to do down there, and hopefully we'll get away with it. Now the reason I wanted to do the silicon first is because when I fit my shower screen, I want that silicon to carry on through the back of it. The last time I did this, I actually did it when the silicon was dry, but still soft enough that I could push it down. This has gone fairly firm, but I still think that when my channel sits on the wall, I can push it down in, and then of course we're going to be sealing up the back of it anyway. Now sticking on the theme of using the heaviest possible things we can for what is meant to be a lightweight build. Uh, this is the shower glass. It is not a framed unit, and for that reason, well, I think we might have assumed it was framed, but it's not. This black is actually on the glass, and unfortunately, the glass is 6 mil or thicker, and it's just, <laughs> it weighs a ton. Anyway, it is what it is. So we need to get this up on the wall. We've got to put the channel on the wall first. And then get this fitted. Right, I've prepped up our screen. I've got the pivot section, so another channel onto that. Now I've got to fit this one up on the wall. Now this is where all of our planning should pay off. What should also pay off is the fact that we film everything so I can go back and see uh, where things were exactly. But I know I've got a 50 mil batten here on the wall. Then there's about a 20 mil gap and then another 50 mil batten. And that was intentional so that the center rim of our bath, the center of that comes up on a batten. Therefore, when we install this wall panel, I know that we're going to hit a strong batten which is secured to the wall structure. You can see what I mean down the bottom. Because I've now got my bead there, I kind of need to push down into that to make sure I've got a seal. That should be fine. We'll get a fixing in the bottom first, I think, and then I can plumb it up. Let's just check our theory. So I want to come in about 100 mil from there, which is where it is now. Plumb bum. Just about hitting it. I reckon we probably need to go out a little bit. There we go. Now this wall panelling is fairly strong, but it is only plastic. So I'm going to put a little pilot hole through that first. And then we'll get a fix in it. Oh, don't tell me my who rewatched it. Great. So I won't tighten that one up all the way yet. That's our plumb line. 75, 76, that's good to the naked eye. Now it's amazing how many videos and installs you see where people smack a load of silicon behind these channels and just completely bed the whole thing in. Now you think that might be right uh, but actually it's better to leave it freely draining behind and that's how these are designed. It would make sense however for me to just put a tiny blob on each of these holes which is what I'm going to do now because the way you do a shower screen is you kind of allow water to get behind it. I'll show you when I come to seal it in a minute but we don't seal the inside although kind of everything in your mind says you should be sealing on the wet side we seal on this side. That means that water if it does get behind there can go to the bottom and drain out naturally. Therefore all I'm going to do is just put a tiny little blob under my screw holes. Good, so that's really solid in there now. All of those are anchored in, we know everything's plumb. We don't need to do any sealing yet. So what I need to do now is lift the panel in place, plumb it up, and then drill the steel. 
Have I got a drill bit? Probably not. A little bit cowboy. I don't know if this is aluminium. Seems like it. Um, so the wood drill bit works fine. It's a three mil bit. Oh, this is a stupid weight. Let's go and get a air wedge. Right, it's seated in there. I've got an airbag here, and now we just need to plumb up this line before we get in those screws. So we know that that rubber is going to hit the do three watts it. So that bottom one's drilled, so I need another down here. Oh, I've got soggy feet. Do you like it? Yeah, I do. Do you? Yeah. At least I haven't got frames to clean. It's smooth glass this yeah. side. And what's going on there? It must be aluminium because my little wood drill bit's doing a sterling job in there. I'm not going to put a spirit level on it just in case it's moved because then I'll probably cry in the bathtub. That's for the top. To see a full grown man Nobody in wants the to see me in there. Actually, what we could do, can you release that airbag? Just make sure it doesn't drop. Oh, it dropped. Dropped a treat. Unless it was pushing the bath down. We shall allow it. So these are the panels that we've picked. They are just a matte white PVC panel and they're as matte as you can find. They don't have the V grooves in them, so they should leave a fairly flat ceiling, a uh, smooth ceiling just with the occasional join every 200 mil. So there's a look at the end. And I'm not sure if you'll see it in the window like but you can just about make out uh, those sort of ribs on the underside, but I'm hoping that we haven't got too much directional light on the ceiling so we shouldn't be able to see that. So I've measured up this end wall, so that's where the trim's going to be that the cladding slots into. So we'll cut that to length, and then the first one that's running this way, we'll put on it. Okay, so we're going to install this one first, which means everything's going to slot into it. Now, all of the installation instructions just suggest staples, but... You know, I, I'm not sure I sit comfortably with that. I'm not <laughs> sure that. Braces, Tim. <laughs> I'm not sure that sits quite right with me. So I'm going to use some adhesive as well, um, just to help it on its way, I guess. We haven't actually got much to fix to up here. I don't know if we get a staple in there. <laughs> Missed a bit of pink paint in that corner, didn't we? All right, we're going to pre-fit the first side trim to the first board before we go up. I've notched out the back of it so that when it sits in the corner, rather than mitering it, they'll just half lap over each other and it won't sit proud. It's going to be like that. Yeah. And then hopefully that'll sit in there. Right, bit of an update. I thought I could go, go it alone whilst Joe went out, uh, but it turns out it's far easier if there's two of us. So I'm going to hold on. Uh, I'm going to get this next one drilled up. The lighting, uh, the light fitting has come down, so I will drill that hole now. So we should be able to get it in, across, and then up. Now, what we haven't shown you is this end. You can see our room is something like 60 mil longer than the boards. You can get these in four meters, but there's hardly any around. So uh, in the matte white so therefore we've got to put another piece they come in a pack of nine or ten so we're going to put our last piece running that way 
uh, and just accept that there's a join there. You can get little H trims that slot either way. Whether I'll do that, I'm not sure. I'm going to see if I can just get a neat butt join on the end there because if I finish these flush, we should then be able to use the factory edge on a new one. But so far, I mean, it's not too glossy and the joins are pretty subtle. I'm glad we didn't go for this throughout the whole building. My original idea was to run this white ceiling board through the whole cabin and I'm kind of glad I didn't do that because it's okay but it's not the nicest looking stuff. Uh, it's lightweight but apart from that it's not much going for it. Right, last one. This one has already got the trim pre-fitted to it. I've slotted that on. I've measured up. So hopefully it will go on because I've already put the adhesive up. We're going to try and get both ends up. Um, yeah, don't worry. Okay, that's just better. Okay. Thought you were going your end first. No, 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 we're going in and then tying it up. I mean, I have no idea if it's actually going to fit against the wall. Last piece is finally in. We've managed it and just a little gap here to close up, so I'm going to try and pull it back. I was going to tape, because this you can't staple, we're just putting adhes adhesive behind there. So I was just going to put some masking tape to hold it in place, but it's so nicely wedged that I can feel it's up tight and it's not going anywhere and it's going to leave it. And then the one bit that is dropping a little bit, I can just wedge with a spirit level. So it's only really that, and I can't see it's getting that any tighter now. No, I mean, there were some gaps over here anyway. Yeah. So. All right, no need to put them on. <laughs> Good, so the only thing I didn't do is step it in over there, but I thought I'd just put an extra white trim. Right, rather than trying to... Oh, yeah. Um, I'll just put a little D trim. So with the majority of the ceiling now up, it was time to turn my attention to the end trim. Now this, as I said earlier, was the frustrating little skinny bit that just had to finish off the length. So I decided to run it 90 degrees to the rest of the boards and I cut it so that the edge of the groove of the board just overlapped the end of the boards that I've already installed. So it almost looked like it was meant to be there. With a bunch of adhesive on top of the trim, I then masking taped it in place to hold it until it had gone off. Now, it took a little bit of fiddling around to get it to line up because I slightly undersized it, but in the end, it's in. It's still gonna need either some sealant or trim around where it joins onto the paintwork of the wall, but I think we got away with it. Now, it's looking okay. The stapler did the job, but I would recommend using the adhesive as well. It was simply a hand stapler that I used. It was hard to see in the time lapse, but it did do the job and it went through the plastic fine into our battens and the ceiling is done. Thank you for watching everyone. Remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.